In this video, we're going to talk about validation and validating our HTML files. So to start off, let's create a new HTML file and call this valid.html. Double clicking on it, and now we're going to go ahead and type out our document structure, which is doc type, HTML, our opening and closing HTML tags, our head, opening and closing tags, our title, we're going to give this a title of valid, HTML, and then we have our body. So now that we have our structure, let's just add some simple text to the body of our HTML file. going to save this, open it in our browser, and notice that it's just some text output to the browser as you would expect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to head over to validator.w3.org. This is the W3C markup validation service. The W3C stands for the World Wide Web Consortium, and they lay out the standards of web-based technologies. It is important to validate our HTML files so that they may be displayed consistently among different browsers and different platforms. So let's start off by using the Validate by Direct Input feature. So we'll go ahead and select our HTML contents, copy these, Command-C on the Macintosh and Control-C on Windows, and go ahead and just paste this in to the text area provided. Command-V on the Macintosh and Control-V on Windows. And we're just going to go ahead and click Check. This will attempt to run our HTML through the validator. As you can see, this document was successfully checked as HTML5, and that is exactly what we want. However, we should pay attention to these three warnings. Our result is passed with three warnings. So let's check out these three warnings and see what they are. So the first warning is using experimental feature HTML5 conformance checker. This is basically saying that while HTML5 is still a work in progress and is not set in stone, this validator for HTML5 may be slightly unreliable and maybe not up to date. So while HTML5 is not set in stone, we will always have this warning. But that's okay. So now moving on to the bottom two warnings. No character encoding declared at document level and using direct input mode UTF-8 character encoding assumed. Now it looks like these two warnings are relating to the same thing, something about character encoding. So let's head back over to our HTML document and let's add some character encoding. We'll be using the character set UTF-8. By setting the character set of our HTML file, this will guarantee that we won't have any invalid characters rendering in the browser. So let's go ahead and add our character set. We can do this with the meta tag. Meta char set equals opening and closing double quotes UTF-8 and then close it just like that. We've just added the character set to our HTML file. Go ahead and save this and take a look in the browser and see if it's made any real changes to our text that is being output to the browser. As you can see, it is exactly as it was before. It has not made any changes. So let's run this through the validator once more, but this time let's use the file upload facility rather than the direct input facility. Validate by file upload, choose file, 
and we will upload our valid.html file and click check. This document was successfully checked as HTML5, passed one warning. Let's take a look at what this one warning is and it is the using experimental feature HTML5 conformance checker. And as I mentioned earlier, this is okay. We can't do anything about this and it will be there until HTML5 is set in stone. So by declaring our character set, i.e. our character encoding, and using the file upload facility rather than the direct input facility, we're able to remove those bottom two warnings and have our HTML5 validate successfully. I hope you've learned a little bit about who the W3C is, why we validate our HTML files, and why we declare our character set or our character encoding.